Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about bone constraint and specifically we are going to talk about copy rotation bone constraint. So for that first let's add a armature and then we will add two bones. So I'll just right click and subdivide this um, yeah, twice I guess. No, nope, let's just subdivide it once. I'll also uh, duplicate this once over here. For adding constraints, it is really important to know the names and the axis, like its local axis. So I'll just enable these two options, the name and the axis in the armature properties. Now let's go into the pose mode by hitting control tab. Now constraints can only be applied in pose mode. So bone constraint. Uh, and now I want to add a bone constraint on this uh, bone number three. So I'll go ahead and add a copy rotation. Now I want this bone to copy the rotation of bone number two over here. So I'll go ahead and select the armature and now in the bone, let's select the bone number two. We will talk about all of these things uh, in a bit, but just to try it out, uh, I am inside the, I have selected the global gizmo and now I'll rotate this on the Y. And as you can see, it is copying the rotation globally. Now let's go ahead and go into the X-ray mode. And as you can see that this bone's local axis, uh, the Y is up, Z is in the this direction and X is in that direction. But globally, my Y is facing this way, my X is facing this way and my Z is facing that way. So as you can see the target and owner. So we are taking my rotation, the transform you can say our coordinate system we are taking the from target and we are applying it to the owner now the target bone is definitely the bone number two as you can see we have selected over here so this is my target and this is my owner on which the constraint is sitting on now we are uh, as we are taking everything from uh, world space so however this bone is oriented in the world coordinate or world axis which is this one as you can see over here that is being applied to this one now if i go ahead and change my targets low from world to local space as you can see my um, owner it suddenly got rotated on the x axis in a positive 90 degree i guess oh, wait let me check uh, no, it uh, it actually got rotated in the negative 90 degree. Now, why did it do that? So, as you can see, locally, uh, let's just talk about the target bone for now. Um, so, locally, my Y is pointing uh, in the up direction, but globally, it should uh, it is pointing in this direction where my where we are looking at right now. So, to go from local to world space uh, what happened is we got rotated on the X like this so negative 90 degree and now as you can see uh, my Z my local Z is facing on the global Z my local Y is on the global Y which is also known as world uh, world Y so local X is now pointing the world x and so on so that is what is happening over here now if i change my owner to local again now you'll see that it has returned to its original state now my local air uh, now let's see uh, locally if i move on the y so on the y so rotate on the y you'll see my y axis is being affected if i rotate on the z my z is being affected and if i rotate on the x my x is being affected now you might be uh, you will definitely have to uh, like think about it like wait what's the difference between the world and local now um suppose now my this bone uh, has some different uh, rotation so i'll just give it a different role so go into the edit mode and then inside the role, uh, I'll rotate this something like this. So I'll rotate it by 90 degree uh, and that will actually change its local axis. Uh, if you haven't noticed, as you can see. So now what we will do, we will go back into the pose mode and now 
um i'll keep my constraint on like that okay um so if i now rotate this on x uh it will rotate on its uh local x axis so because both of them are set to local space so if i rotate this on its uh, local x as you can see it is rotating on its x axis if i rotate it on the y uh it is going to perform the same action okay uh because they both are pointing the same direction and if i rotate this on the z axis you'll see that it is now rotating in a global x axis like board number 3 is actually rotating on a global x axis now again if i go back and then i change both of them to the world space again um you'll see that now x is behaving as x y is wait sorry y is behaving as y and z is rotating in the z so it doesn't matter what uh the where the local axes are pointing it will always use the world space now there is another really handy uh space that you can use which is local with parent um and now this is really useful when you are making hand ik uh, and you want your palm of the hand to move with the uh, your wrist ik or something so i use that extensively uh, but for this case i'll just uh, remove the constraint from this bone uh, let's also go ahead and remove the roll from this bone as well so in the edit mode just make the roll zero uh, just to keep the things simple now local with parent how does it work um i might not have to make some changes let's just go into the pose mode let us again add in a copy rotation constraint i'll select the armature i'll select the bone number 2 again um and now uh, by the way this is my bone number 2 um again now this is working like rotating on the x y and z it is working but if i rotate this bone oh it is definitely working again let me change this to local space both of them and now let us rotate that okay so whenever you are using local space uh, as you can see in the world space definitely it would work because it is constantly taking uh, this world position and rotation but when you are using local space which in most of the cases you will so as you can see if i rotate the parent uh, of the bone number 2 or the parent or the like the last parent uh this bone is not getting affected so in the targets we can set this to local with parent and this will also take into consideration um the parent's orientation so if your parent is rotating your child so it will actually take the child's uh but your parent will also like add on top of it i hope uh that makes sense So yeah this is how you can use the copy rotation bone constraint so yeah now the next thing is the axis with the axis you can actually set which axis do you want to copy or if you want to invert those axis so as you can see if i rotate on the x it is moving uh but i don't want it to rotate on y and z so even if i rotate it on every axis it is only going to rotate on its x and now i can reverse or i can invert any of those axes if i want so if i now rotate it on the positive x direction it will move in the negative so it is basically uh, would mirror whatever the thing you are doing whatever rotation you are giving it to it uh, and now the next thing is the mix type you can experiment with this mix types uh, whatever suits your need if you want to add totally replace the animation uh, or you can say the rotation data or before and after original um we have talked about this and now the influence is really handy when you have multiple constraints and you have stacked them and then you want rotation to be applied only certain period of time so then if the influence is set to 0 uh the constraint is like uh hidden or it won't work so you can easily animate this value by clicking on the dot over here and 
at the certain uh, keyframes you can enable this and disable this on your will so whatever your needs uh, this is how the copy rotation bone constraint work also in the future video we are going to talk about the next constraint which is copy scale i've already talked about uh, the copy location and we are going to continue this uh, small parts of series so yeah this all thing will be under a playlist in my youtube channel of basic rigging so if this video helped you in any way please like this video and support me by subscribing so yeah thank you all so much for watching hope you all learned something from this videos i'll see you in the next video bye bye